Hi everyone, let's go over my micro and local bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Started with my micro bearish scenario where we are looking for a 5 wave structure to the downside where currently we're working on this wave 4 before we then want to see an impulsive structure to the downside in a wave 5. Now because this wave 2 over here was very short in time and also simple in a zigzag, we can expect wave 4 to be a lot longer in time and also more complex which currently is the case. Now if we are looking for the end of a wave 4 and then a wave 5 to the downside what we want to see are impulsive structures to the downside because wave 5 by itself should be an impulsive move a 5 wave structure to the downside so let's assess the probabilities of wave 4 already being in and looking for downside and that's the reason why I have three folders over here called impulse 1 2 and 3 so if we jump to the first one over here and we go to the 30 minute chart then in this scenario wave 4 ended now you can see over here we have been ranging for a long time very very sideways so now currently the high and therefore the end of then a wave 4 is this high over here now this high is a bit higher than the one on the right on my coinbase chart over here so for people counting then an impulse to the downside this is then a wave one followed by a wave two and you want to see continuation to the downside in a wave three however besides trying to count a solid wave one in here this wave two retraced to the 886 fibonacci taken from the high to the low of one which is a rare target for a wave two and a common target for a wave b or a wave x meaning the probabilities are automatically higher for price to be corrective and therefore expecting another move up to take at least these highs than an impulse to the downside because of the 886 the probabilities are lower this is a 1 2 and 3 and the probabilities are higher this is either an ABC for then continuation up or a WXY for then continuation up before then maybe eventually a move to the downside if we go to the second scenario we have to zoom in a little bit again and we go to the 15 minute time frame and now I switch the high one high to the right so this is a lower high over here just by a few dollars but if we start counting from this high to the downside in case we were thinking about an impulse over here we want to try and count a five wave structure to the downside over here because we are thinking about an impulse. Now what you see is a very low time frame counted and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But there's a couple of problems with this impulse to the downside. First of all, there is overlap between a wave 1 and a wave 4, which is not allowed in a normal impulsive structure. If there is overlap between a wave 1 and a wave 4, we have to immediately start thinking about diagonals. And if you want to see diagonals, preferably, you want to spot a contracting diagonal, which is a diagonal that looks like this within a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Not an expanding diagonal, as an expanding diagonal is very, very rare. Now, in this particular scenario, what you can do to check for diagonals is take a parallel channel, put it on the low of 1 to the low of 3, wherever low you take, whichever low you take, and then eventually pull it to the high of two. And what you don't want to see is the upper trend line of this channel to be hit. But clearly over here, this high of a wave four hit the high of the channel, invalidating a contracting diagonal. And we know that an expanding diagonal is very rare, meaning that the probabilities of this being a wave one to the downside, followed by an expanding flat in a two and then continuation to the downside in a wave three is low. Now, if we then go to another way of counting this move to the downside, we now move this wave three over here from this low to one lower low. And this wave four went from this high to a lower high over here in this scenario we then have a wave one two three four and a wave five so now this wave three is extended however in a wave three you still want to be able to count a solid five wave structure because wave one three and five are impulses by themselves so if we then look inside this wave three then somehow we have to count this as a nice five wave structure to the downside but whatever you do this high over here is always going to have overlap with any of the these structures over here so whatever one two you can make if this is a wave four for then a final push in a five to the downside we always have overlap between a potential wave four and a potential wave one inside this wave three which then also again invalidates an impulse to the downside over here therefore invalidates a wave three and basically invalidates the whole structure so that doesn't look really good so if we then look at the scenario that i currently have my eyes on i'm looking still for a bit of a move to the upside based on the elliott wave probabilities where we are in a 
corrective structure based on what I just explained. So we're looking for a three-way structure to the upside where an interesting area, first of all, is this blue resistance area over here, which is sitting between 26.4K and 26.6K. Now, potentially we can count this as a wave A to the upside, as you can count five waves over here on the three minute as shown in the previous video, for then a complex sideways corrective structure in a wave B, before then a C towards the upside, where currently, if this is the low of wave B over here, then the most common target for wave C is between the 1 and the 1.236 in overlap with this blue box. Now, for the low of this wave B, you can see that this whole area over here is a target area for a wave Y, which is quite big. There is no problem for price to take this low over here because currently we have a double bottom as you can see low number one low number two so if price would go to the downside and take this low and move up there is still no problem for me it's going to be more of a problem if price is going to take this low that would not be great as i've written over there so what we are looking for is a move to the upside where then this is a very important target area for the end of a potential wave four and then we have to see if we get impulsive structures to the downside to start a wave five the yes or the no because for a wave five we want to see an impulsive structure to the downside now if we look at some of the support resistance areas over here then in the previous video we've been talking about this area over here the golden pocket with the value area low it's the second time we reach this area now as you can see we now like really hit the golden pocket and move towards the upside point of control is always important resistance and if price can pass this point of control then we would be looking for the value area high now price also has a double top over here because this high is a little bit lower as mentioned by a few dollars which is always a magnet for price so that's interesting but we also of course now have this double bottom on the chart over here and something i do like to show you is this support resistance area now on the 15 minute you can see how nice the supported uh, resistance area is support over here or yeah support over here support resistance eventually support bit of support again we're constantly ranging around this area and now we are above the support resistance area so it might be one that you want to have on the chart if we look at the cvd divergences then yeah it's been quite an uh, quite a day for cvd divergences because you want to see proof of support and cvd is a great tool more locally over here when we hit that confluence area for the first time and i was making my video around this wick over here i was looking for proof of support now what we see on the lower time fr frames what we saw on the lower time frames where some bullish CVD divergences. If I go to the three minute and I zoom in to that first bounce, higher low in price, lower low in yellow, lower low in blue. Bullish CVD divergences for a bit of a push towards the upside. But then over here, around the point of control area of this range, we started to create bearish CVD divergences. So around the point of control, which is a resistance area, lower high on price, but look at the higher high here on yellow, right? Massive bearish CVD divergences for then a big push to the downside and as it stands now more locally over here things are quite neutral so we have to wait and see how that is going to work we just keep an eye on the support areas that we know about with this which is the double bottom over here with the value area high and the golden pocket and if price goes to the upside we have the double top and the resistance over here if we then finally look at the probabilities then on the micro we are still looking for a move to the downside in a wave five and it remains important to repeat that we are looking for impulsive structures and as mentioned the impulses to the downside this being the first one not very probable because of the 886 hit the second one because of overlap and an expanding diagonal and the third one, because of this wave three, are not very probable for the more local price section and the beginning of an impulse to the downside. And therefore, more locally, the probabilities from an Elliott wave point of view are still higher to find a way towards the upside and have a look at the double top over here at 26.3k, but also this resistance area. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use, in my opinion, which is the CVD and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye